that the human being can adapt to, to different environments, to different situations. That doesn't mean that all adaptation is actually healthy. Sometimes we shouldn't adapt when the conditions that require us to adapt to are unnatural. It doesn't mean that if we can adapt to anything, we should adapt to anything. adjust to anything that humanity is doing and still, let's say, prevail, that doesn't mean that humanity is entitled to do everything it desires with the earth, just because the earth will survive, you know. Just because something is surviving, that doesn't mean it is also thriving. So, if humanity is cutting down the forests of the earth, if humanity is treating the earth literally sometimes like a wasteland or a pile of garbage, and if the earth manages to still exist and survive, that doesn't mean that either the earth or humanity are thri thriving. To thrive in a certain environment means that both the environment and the inhabitants need to coexist in a balanced way together, listening to each other. And finding a healthy natural state of, homeo of homeostasis together. Right now, we, what we have witnessed is the inhabitants of the earth have literally trashed the earth. Thinking of themselves to be superior just because they were able to invent tools and technologies of destruction, basically, with which they could, let's say, subdue the nature existing on this earth. That's just a power play. What humanity has been doing has been a power play. Instead of living in harmony with the earth, instead of creating a communication, a two-way communication in which you do not take before you ask or before it is given or you create a collaboration together, and then you mutually give and take from each other. But instead of finding a balanced way in which to coexist with this earth, humanity has been overimposing its own will forcefully over the earth. Building tools and technologies through which Humanity could just take, and take, and take. Mindlessly. Without minding at all the natural balance that should have been preserved between giving and taking. Between two living beings the human beings and the 
Earth, which should have been able to have a communication together. This is a frustration and an anger that I find in a primordial place within myself of the mother being freaking raped. Because I can see that many individuals that exist on this earth right now, they refer to the so-called Mother Earth like she would have needed to just give and give and give. Like if she would be, you know, an endless sack just because she is the mother. Like what mother wouldn't nurture its own child if the child truly really needs it? But the question here is, is the child truly really needing to suck up the milk, let's say, of the mother in such a devastating and destructive way? I disbelieve that. I think a natural human being has natural empathy towards every single living thing. I think a true human being feels natural empathy towards the animals, towards the plants, towards its own body, towards the body of the others, and towards the body of the earth, for sure. So who is here that lacks this type of empathy? And it is, and it has been using the human beings to destroy this earth, to destroy our mother, let's say, if she would be our mother. That doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that if the earth can adapt and adapt and adapt that that adaptation that the earth can continue to do is healthy. Sometimes when we adapt to unnatural conditions we become unnatural. Both us, the human beings and the earth.
it's just a simulation. Why worry? Everything is pixels, you know. Just don't don't mind what's happening to the earth. Don't mind what's happening to you, your body, to yourself. Just everything is an illusion, you know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well, apparently these guys are still in the simulation, suffering alongside everybody else. Although it is a simulation, why do you suffer then? Why is there so much pain that wrecks you to your entire core? And why have so many philosophies and religions have said about the souls being able to freaking die in this place? Like This is a place in which it's possible for a soul to almost die. So it's a simulation but is it only a simulation? That's the question. Are we sure we haven't, let's say, paid any coins, let's say, when we entered the simulation? Are we sure we had, we didn't have to give something of ourselves to be in the simulation in the first place? Let's say some part of our essence. Let's say some part of our soul. So are we sure that it's just a simulation since our own awareness is currently immersed and attached to the simulation and our soul is being contorted day and night by the simulation so yeah mentally and physically it is a simulation but the simulation itself has access to our soul because we had to give something we had to pay some coins to buy the ticket to the simulation so we paid with our own being we paid with our own essence we included and inserted and we gave a portion of our soul so we can experience this simulation so this simulation now has access to our soul and whatever we do in the simulation has the ability to change our soul so if we mutilate our soul while we are in the simulation by the choices that we make then we are just mutilating ourselves and our own soul which is eternal let's say so we are just gonna let's say if even if the simulation ends we are just gonna remain with a mutilated soul for eternity this is why it is vital to pay attention and to give the most amount of respect and honor to this experience right now. It doesn't matter that it is a simulation because our very soul is connected to the simulation itself and how we act in the simulation leaves permanent marks on our own soul. So for the ones that think, oh, just don't mind, don't mind the simulation, it's everything is an illusion, everything is Maya, you know, or don't mind the earth, she will adapt, she will create new species. Well, that's a lack of, lack, that's a crass lack of respect. That's a crass lack of honor towards existence itself. Because even the simulation is created through the same means that existence itself exists. The simulation is part of existence. It's a part of life. So ultimately, even the simulation itself is just another form of life. So if you do not respect the simulation, then you are not respecting a portion of life. we are part of life the result is simple to deduce since we are not respecting a part of life we are not respecting a part of ourselves so the first thing that we have to do I have to answer this first thing 
thing that we have to relearn is how to pay respect. How to independent of how our life is going, independent of anything that we've been through. The first thing, in my opinion, which I deeply feel it right now, is we learn need to learn to pay respect. Like, like if I would advise anything which is of utter importance right now is learning respect. Learning respect towards life itself. Honoring that which is exactly as it is. And understanding that beneath what appears to be mundane, beneath what appears to be, you know, unimportant, sometimes it lies the most precious things. The simple things and the little things are the big things. So how we treat even the most, you know, little thing in this earth shows something about ourselves for eternity. So if we just go around the earth, go around our lives and say, oh, earth is just a just, you know, oh, she'll find a way. I have what? 40 more years or 30 more years of my life. I'll manage, you know. This is this is when we think really narrowly and we think really limited. And we because we, we lack and we miss the broader scope of our entire existence. We don't understand that everything we have been doing here has been leaving a mark for eternity, saying who we are. So when you start to understand this, you, you can start to have a completely different perspective about life. Because how you treat this life is how you've actually treated yourself. This is how we, we grow to become that which we, we do. We create ourselves through our actions and the attitudes that we employ. So even though right now, if you look around, it seems almost like there is no chance, you know, there is no chance for seeing this earth re rehabilitated, you know, maybe we will never get to see it in its, you know, magnificent, majestic form. Maybe it's just gonna be only downwards from here, you know. But even so, I do believe 100% with my entire being that even though our life right now might seem devastating and we all suffer in a way or another, meeting our own life the way it is right now, even if in its devastated form, with, you know, honor, with respect, showing honor and respect towards life itself. Even though, let's say, this earth might be like a creature which is currently dying, it's one thing to look at a dying creature and to spit on it, let's say, or to disregard, disregard it, in, even in, especially in these most precious moments. Imagine somebody dying. How would you, how would you behave towards that soul, towards that person or that animal that you see it is dying? Would you go and kick it? Would you spit on it and say, ah, we will find another animal, you know, it doesn't matter that this person dies. There will be others, you know. 
or will you, would you give everything that you could to that person in that moment? Be there in sacredness with that person or with that animal in that moment. Just silence and just sacredness and just reverence towards its own existence. Acknowledging its existence right at the very end of it. I'm just saying. I feel it's so, such important. It's so, what we are living right now is so important, although it not doesn't appear. And many of us are still really, really numbed. Many of us are literally completely ignorant, completely unaware of what this entire experience is really about. But this is a call towards remembering the sacredness that already exists within your heart. You need to stay with yourself sometime. Until the true sacredness and profundity finds you again. Until you are able to cry literally cry when seeing just the tiniest life form around you a leaf, a breeze of the wind your feet you know, touching the ground being fully here in your body Feeling all your cells connected and being embodied. Breathing all your cells. Imagine right now they are breathing with everything else around. Through cellular respiration, of course. We are breathing each other out, in and out, all the time. We are... connected than we can even imagine. So, find the reverence or find some time to sit with yourself so this reverence can find you. Because I feel we are going through profound moments right now. And I feel that this attitude of learning honor learning respect and showing reverence, honor and respect towards life right now is of such significance that it can almost it's just it's, it's unspeakable the significance right now of this simple act of showing respect and reverence and honor towards life so stop being numbed Shake off the numbness and the coldness from your heart and allow yourself to feel once again everything that is, including the pain, the tears, the anger, the dissolution, the depression, the grief that already exists within each and every heart, which is, which pertains to a true human being. I can tell you that a heart the true heart of a true human being is devastated right now and all the hearts, the true hearts are filled with an immense pain so it's time to go back to our heart and to allow ourselves to feel whatever it is there this is the only way we can truly come back to life we cannot come back to life without the heart. We need our heart with us because it is the essence of what we are. So if we want to escape the simulation or conclude our journey here, we cannot leave our heart here. We cannot leave our true soul here. Of course, we have to take it with us. But in order to take it with us, we have to recognize it. We have to be able to say, hey, you're my soul indeed. Oh my God, but you're in a such a devastated way, you're full of pain and you look terrible, you're just, you 
no skin and bones and I'm terrified to look at you. God, what I have done, you know? We have to recognize our soul in the terrible condition it is in. How else would we, will we be able to leave this place, let's say, without our heart, without our soul? So, this is the time to go back to the most simple things and learning honor and respect towards everything from life. And as much as we show honor and respect and reverence towards the entirety of life, this is how we can slowly start to recognize our own soul and the pain and the terrible condition it is in our soul is being given back to us when we are learning how to give back reverence, respect, honor and reciprocity towards life. It's as simple as that. <laughs>